gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, it is me, Duke CT, here. Well, not live tonight. Um, I had some weird things happening on Skype, so, and uh, talk to you, so, no, live Duke CT Lounge tonight. And, uh, well, we, but hey, you know what, we'll get, we'll, we'll bring it back live. Uh, I'm going to try to do it next week, but I'm trying to have something planned, something special planned for next week. And, um, but the week after, I will try to bring it back live. Because, again, I usually do this live on TalkShoe.com and other type of, um, <clears throat> other type of ways of bringing this up. So, that's what I usually do, ladies and gentlemen, and for the new people here and new subscribers. Anyway, uh, we're going to be talking some interesting things here. We're going to be talking. Wow, there's a lot of good and positive things to talk about in wrestling. But yet... Yeah. <laughs> but first, let's talk about Total Nonstop Action. Total Nonstop Action's craziness has been uh, documented. It has been going around so long. And a lot of people are like, well, what um, is, you know, what is the whole thing about this? What's going on right now? Well, first things first, um, let's talk about, well, Billy Corgan. Billy Corgan wanted to, um, you know, Billy Corgan seemed to be going to, wanted to buy TNA. Uh, wanted to be the sole owner because he, for the past couple of, uh, for several months, he has been supplying TNA loans so they could run their business and such to <clears throat> run their business, run their type of, um, situations and such. In fact, he wasn't the only one paying, making money and doing these type of, um, these type of situations. In fact, when you look at this, uh, supposedly, um, audience of one, like I said previously, uh, audience of one, um, also, uh, paid money for the production. And then you have, um, uh, you know, um, <laughs> Other uh, people suing them, including the state of Tennessee. Um, the state of Tennessee is saying that they are fining a lot for unpaid taxes, and the link will be in the description about that, about all these type of issues. And uh, we'll put the links in the description about what happened, about how TNA has gotten to this position. And then Billy Corn filed a lawsuit a couple weeks ago, and according to this Monday, uh, Dix, it is official. Um, it is. Um, uh, it looks like uh, Billy Corgan does not take over TNA. He is uh, continue. He is. Um, he did not win the well the big prize or whatever. Um, it, he said, "Quote." I think where is the the uh, tweets? Um, uh, yeah, let's look at this as the. Uh, t- uh, uh, tweets and everything about that. <coughs> um, and, and see, there was actually where is it? And there are so many of these tweets. I gotta look this up. Uh, let's see where are they? Because they used there are used there were tweets saying about Billy Corgan not, um, you know, not uh, getting saying he's not happy and everything else. In fact, yeah, Mar- Maria Canez Bennett, I'll, I'll get this right here, says that, you know what, I'm leaving. So she's about to just roll out. <laughs> it's like, you know what, well, I know I'm, I'm leaving wrestling. It's like, I love this. I think uh, Monday says right here, Maria Canez Bennett, news, any news that doesn't ever tell the whole story. It will be an interesting next couple of months. What I know is I'm leaving wrestling, so, so she's getting out. She's like, I, I got to get out. <laughs> I have to leave. Uh, this this industry, I gotta leave this business, and I I I understand that. I I see that. I'm like, you know what? There are sometimes you just gotta leave. You just gotta you gotta get out. And I, I I see that a lot of people are like, man, don't you can sit? No, you know what? In some places, you just gotta leave. And TNA had plenty of chances. They had one, two, three strikes to out. You're done, son. You're done. You got you got. It's over. It's over, <laughs> as one person would say. But 
um, yeah, it's it's uh, it's it gets to this point of what are you going to do? It's just um, uh, and uh, this type of um, environment and. And you know what? I can't get mad of this. I cannot get mad at Maria Canellas Bennett. I can't get mad at her for that. I can't get mad of this um, a person who just says I'm done and I'm leaving. And after all this uh, unnecessary drama, and that right there is, you can't really, I can't really yell. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, I'm saving it right there to pick. But um but yeah, it's 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 just you know, you got to sit there, you're like, you know what, I I think it like you know, some people are like, you know what, you just gotta live and uh, just like, you know, take your you know, take you know, take uh you know, you know and hold them when you fold them. Oh by the way, here's a tweet, uh by the way, from um this past Monday. A uh, quote from, this from Billy's Twitter. He says, For those asking, I am no way disappointed in the judge ruling regarding total nonstop action. Rather, I'm grateful the judge considered the case. It's important to note is these proceedings have brought forth facts which illuminate business prices I have fought against for a reason. And I suggest that a careful reading of, on the judge ruling supports that there can be no claim of victory by any per, anyone in a position of authority. Uh, yeah. And there was a lot of things that came out of this, uh, you know, seeing that supposedly they're insolvent, Tina was solvent. That's not true. They were insolvent. That means they weren't um, financially stable for the last, uh, you know, for this past several months. No, the fact of a of the lawsuits with audience of one, and b the um, <clears throat> the uh, a. Uh, a lien against uh, TNA for unpaid taxes by the state in Tennessee. <laughs> you know that they're, they're not they're not a solvent company. They are flirting with. I would not be surprised in the next two or three years they might have to would say, "Hey, this company looks like they're going to go bankrupt." But supposedly, right now, when you look at it, um, ladies and gentlemen, that TNA is not going to be bankrupt as. Total nonstop action, action and Anaheim Sports and Entertainment Corporation and Impact Ventures parent company of yep they have provided credit for them and according to this the Fight Network um, the link could be in the description their quote here says uh, Anaheim Sports and Entertainment Corporation is a global sports media company that operates Fight Network. Impact Wrestling ex exclusive broadcaster in Canada, as well as ex exec exclusive worldwide de digital streaming partner for all total nonstop action programming. It is also equally stakeholder impact vendors. The agreement includes the appointment of uh, um, Anaheim's Executive Vice President Ed Dorham to the Impact Ventures Board of Managers. The company will be managed by the board with Mr. Dorham representing the board in all major operating and restructuring decisions. Dixie Carter will continue as chair of the company as well as her position on the board of managers. Billy Corgan is no longer with the company. We have a successful long-term partnership with Fight Network uh, as a Canadian broadcaster and most recently our global partner, said Dixie Carter. Anaheim's team is extensive media experience and I am excited to have a they have a, excited to have that available to us as we plan for the future. The future. These many events and more will happen in the future. It says, in quote, Leonard Asper, of CEO at Anaheim, says, quote, We have constantly maintained that investing in content as we grow, our distribution is important as our strategic necessary, and working more closely with a strong brand like TNA. <laughs> strong brand. Ha! The only brand that's strong there is the Matt Hardy brand. Oh, sorry, the broken Matt Hardy brand, but, you know, that's just the saying. Yeah. But that's just my opinion, and blind with fact with the whole, you know, lawsuits, t uh, tennis, the state of Tennessee trying to get their money, and, you know, and, and other stuff that well, I will go on into. <laughs> It says, quote, the strong brand of is in line with that. This financing is an extension of the support we have been providing since the beginning of the year. They are, 
There are tremendous opportunities to support this company's growth in all platforms and all media alongside Dixie and the Clairvaux Talent and Staff at TNA. You can go to Clairvaux Talent and Staff have been lied to saying that, well, we're not having to rebuy them. Yeah, it's true. It's been, it, it was concerned that W was going to buy them and Dixie Carr said no. Uh, all the other things saying about, you know, Onions One Production, uh, you know, we're going to pay for that money. Up, oh, it's not true. I, <laughs> you know, at one point, you know, you just gotta look and say, man, TNA seems to be lucky. To all this other stuff. But yet, you have this coming from Billy Corgan. This right here from uh, Pitchfork.com says, Billy Corgan says, no longer part of TNA Wrestling. And saying this, but yet, uh, he says, uh, clones that, you know, he has not been paid yet. In fact, TNA was supposed to pay me. They was, that was from his Twitter, and I'll put the link in the description right here. It says, a national court rejected... Corgan's attempt to take over Impact Ventures, and he says he uh, says they were you know they rejected it. He says he's not just he says he's okay with that. He says fine. And now he says Impact Ventures still have not paid him. He asked for a day to get the money together, um, and he has that that's been exploring all the remedies, including new fine new fines with the court. He says, well, here's the tweets right here. TNA. Fact, TNA was supposed to pay me two days ago, which they swore in front of a judge yesterday to ask for a day to get the money together. Upon which, yesterday or today, they reached out directly to settle all claims. So they lied, again, and have used time as a weapon. In fact, I still have not, I have still not been paid, and I'm supporting all rem, uh, remedies, including new fines and court, converting to 30% equity. Yep, this thing is not going to end, folks, and it's going to be really interesting in the next couple of days because t this this lawsuit and now it seems that Anaheim was supposed to take majority of the sale like uh, ownership of TNA but it looks like there's going to be a fight left and it's going to be a very nasty and lo long fight personally uh, you know if I was if I was in Billy Corgan's ear and I know I'm not I am one of many broad many 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 podcasters Many people who would or who have a you know a loud voice, but a voice on the internet. I would tell them if I knew. I'm like Billy, just take the 1.8 mil, all the money they gave you, and just invest in something else. Be it wrestling, be it something else, do it something with profitable in the future. Because I will tell them to get out of the wrestling business now. Because right now wrestling is stagnant. It is stagnant and it is dying. Why in the world would you honestly want to get back into an industry and a business that is completely and utterly stagnant? It's not, there's no growth in it. Little, there's no, there's little to no growth. TNA killed its own growth when it was on, on Spike TV. They got an average of 1.1. Now, they barely get anything close to or anywhere near, um, you know, what they were back on Spike TV. I haven't watched a full, after all this Billy stuff, drama, I stopped watching Impact. I haven't watched Impact since. Because Billy Corgan seems to be a good dude who's trying to do the right thing. But now, you know what? I say, Billy, best thing you could do is just move on. Get out of it right now. Because it's wrestling, honestly, at this point, the way WWE is um, really, really just over, you know, just saturating the whole market with their network, all this wrestling, which is a new show, which um, I will be getting to and talking about. Uh, as well, because the WWE has a brand new show for Cruiserweights, because, uh, you know, Lord knows he need more programming. <laughs> uh, and everything else is oversaturation, and that's what's going to be. I'm, I mean, the only time I look at network is probably old stuff, fun stuff, stuff like, you know, Cruiserweight, you know, stuff that I really want to get into. I don't want, um, I don't, I did not watch any of Hell in a Cell. I barely watched Hell in a Cell, if not at all, when it was live. I skipped the entire pay-per-view. I did not care. And I was happy. Really, I was just... Same thing as No Mercy. I didn't care for No Mercy. After the, the, the title match, I stopped watching. And honestly, I have no real influence or care to, some, to Survivor Series other than Goldberg versus Lesnar. And that's going to be crapped on by the Canadian crowd. The Canadian crowd, because they still pissed off of Bret Hart. I honestly think they should wait till the Royal Rumble, because I don't think they're going to sell out for the Royal Rumble, because uh, because they're trying to play with the hardcores and not for the casual audience. 
And I don't care what y'all say. The casual audience does not care for Kevin Owens. The casual audience does not care for Sasha Banks or Charlotte or any of the females in the Divas Revolution. Let's get that straight clear. None of the, the ratings are in the ones. Don't say, oh, they're going to. No, no, no. And I'll probably get more into this next week where I get some, maybe some guests on. And honestly, I want to hear you guys and gals, people who are with wrestling or not. And I guarantee if you look at the data, they're true. And if you look at the data, if you really want to look at the facts and everything else, I'll, let me find this. I'll, I'll find it. I'll put it in the uh, show notes if I can find it. Is that the WWE was prideful of themselves when they had the last TV deal saying, oh, look, we're so good. We're DVR proof. Mm hmm. They're not. And. I honestly I really wish I could go into Google Trends and see how many people really care. Because honestly, no one really cares. I mean, and they'll say, oh, well, they're selling God, uh, Ellsworth. It's fine. Fine. It's, again, the hardcores. Hardcores make a great audience. Congratulations. Yay. Hardcore fans. That's nice. Make an Ellsworth meme. Yay. But casual fans look at this like, man, this is stupid. Man, you get your world champion lose multiple times, and and you know, and being comedy segments. Meanwhile, we have Goldberg, your top guy who looks serious, portrays himself like, "Wow, this is a superhero." It destroys right Rusev and destroys uh, Paul Heyman. That gets a bump, and everything else goes down. What does that tell you? What does that tell you, people? What does that tell you? But we'll get back to TNA. Yeah, TNA, the company that has basically pissed away a lot of their support, pissed away a lot of their, you know, a lot of fan bases, a lot of people. They have pissed off so many people with their, the way they are doing things, the way have they have, um, you know, they, they have pissed off so many people. Um, um, you know, yeah, they they pissed off so many people, and uh, like man, like ah man, I can't trust them. Not just fans, because the fans have they they left. Wrestlers, they, they they're leaving too. Most of the locker room likes Billy Corgan, so I can't wait for that. that yeah, with Billy Corgan and everything, yeah, that, that's gonna make things so much fun when Billy Corgan. And everyone else, they're like, man, you know, when he leaves, I mean, if they, if he goes into wrestling, uh, how many people will bring? I mean, if he says, you know what, Spike TV, I'm gonna pitch something like, say, an American version of Lucha Underground or something like that. Could you imagine? And then they'll say, hey, it's a completely original product, and something like that. Billy Corgan entering, doing something like that. He's producer. He's not the whole. He doesn't bring himself out there and everything else. He's behind the scenes. That type of thing, and they do something like an American version of Lucha Underground on Spike TV where they get the big numbers. Guess who's gonna call? Guess who those Tommy people with TNA wrestlers are gonna jump ship? How many of them think they're gonna be like, you know what? I'm out here. And Dixie, you're untrustworthy. I don't care. And most of those guys, hey, they're gonna sign two or three year deals. I'm like, you know what? We're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna well, buy their time and they're gonna roll out. Drop back, there's four days as a top back. That's what they're gonna do. They just keep going. <coughs> yeah, and, and again, and it shows me right now. As uh, much as I love the Broken Matt Hardy stuff, and I love Bobby Lashley, I just this company, TNA. I've I really I want this company to do well, but at this point. Um, I'm just, I'm shaking my head and I'm just washing all my stuff away from it. You know, until they get their act together permanently, until they actually get, you know, Dixie Carter leaves, I will not watch it. Billy Corgan actually filmed me home. Cause hey, you know what Billy Corgan, I like him so much. He pushed for the broken Matt Hardy thing. He pushed for it. Cause he understands that wrestling needs characters. It needs, it doesn't need, I mean, athletics are great. He likes, yes, the athletics are great. Athleticism is great. It is something that people like the X-Vision or people like, say, you know, the Cruiserweights or whatever you call them, that's nice. But you know what? They have character. 
There's a reason for them being there, not just spouting video game cat, uh, cliches and having, you know, doing that type of stuff where there's nothing but there. Other thing, other than that, to having purple ropes. See, what what's the W? I'll get to that when I talk about the W. E. Cruiseway show. But when I say this, and I'm going to say this to you, the people, is that the dub that 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 Billy gets it that you need wrestlers needs characters they need someone to root behind they need someone to be like a cheer cheering they need someone to boo they need someone to you know they need someone actually those personas again instead of just being told this like you know you know this type of you know there's no characters on the show anymore they're just people are worse just Triple H's play sets and everything on Raw, which in the end doesn't mean nothing. I mean, Seth Rollins being mad that his uh, his dad his his sugar daddy didn't help him like like uh, you know like all the times he helped him before. Why should I root for Seth Rollins again? He's a failure as a babyface. Brilliant's a failure. Everyone sucks on Monday Night Raw. <laughs> My gosh, everyone is a terrible babyface and they don't know what the hell they're doing. The show is a perpetual, just perpetual fail machine. At least ten, they know what it is. At least I'll say that they know what they are. What is TNA is basically the walking end joke of the wrestling industry. Fine. What identity is Raw? I ask that to you. If you can answer that, tell me what it is. I want to hear your response, baby. Okay, we're gonna take a small little musical break. We'll be right back. And when we all re- return, we're going to be getting into the new WWE Cruiserweight show. And also, the new Wonder Woman trailer just came out. Yes, my friends. We're going to be talking a little about that as well. Seeing what's going to happen. Who, what it's going to be about. Um, we're going to take a look at that. We're going to you know, go through it together. Like, all right, boys, we're going, to, we're going to get through this together. Anyway, this is Duke CT here. We're right back. Right after this. Is we're surrounded by light negation. This black is pitch cause we're trapped by our violent souls. In a deep mind with deep rhymes won't keep my self control. Too many foes, we feel snake bit and we won't take it. Enemies need their face hit, we go and ape shit. Hell is my confinement within this mind. Now trapped and enshrined by my own mind. And we are back here on this recording of the DC Lounge. Thank you so much for joining me. Duke CT. Anyway, anyway, let's get into the WWE and let's talk a little about the Cruiserweights, ladies and gentlemen. Ah, the Cruiserweights. I love the Cruiserweight Classic. I thought it was great, even though there were some hiccups and some things that I, people who won who shouldn't have won, who lost and just lost, and yada, yada, yada. But I think overall, I really think it was a positive thing to really bring back that sports atmosphere of the WWE, I felt really like a WCW type of way, like, when Mike Tanay came out and talked about the Cruiserweights, and not only talked about the Cruiserweights, but felt like they were important, they were really a part, a core influence, a core part of the show, and not only be a poor core part of the show, and their own thing, but also they can actually go into other divisions and, and actually, sing, and actually, uh, to, to actually be a part of the, you know, the higher weight classes, see Eddie Guerrero, see Chris Benoit, see, um, I think Dean Malenko, I mean, heck, Dean Malenko was cruiserweight, but also he was one of the four horsemen, yeah, so, yeah, they were not only part of the cruiserweight, uh, cruiserweights, but they were also a part of main factions, they were a part of, uh, like, main, um, storylines as well, Chris Jericho started as a cruiserweight, X-Pac, uh, you know, um, Six Pac, you know, with the NWO and the Cruiserweight title and the, and such, 
I mean, that actually felt like they were part of the show, but also they were a cruiserweight division, but also they could move up. I mean, that to me is something important as well. But WWE, they started with this, and I felt like, yes, this actually could be really good, very positive. Then they got on Raw. And man, it was and it, and it was a complete another train wreck. People not caring about the athletes chanting Randy Sat. <clears throat> I mean, chanting for Randy Savage during a pretty decent cruiserweight matches. The cruiserweights themselves having little to no character, and they're just you know, and the ones that do have character are just so bland and uninteresting, and. And completely and utterly lame. Hello, TJ Perkins. <laughs> but, you know, it's not like, you know, but hey, the WE, they can fix this, right? They can fix this up. Maybe they need more time to separate the cruiserweights and, and all these other issues. Well, nope, no more. And, <laughs> but now they're saying they're going to change something. They're going to make a new show. <laughs> it's called it's going to be called the new show on W Network is called gonna be called Two O Five Live. Yes, because cruiserweights can only participate in only two hundred and five pounds, or whatever. A one hour show. The action will be called by SmackDown's Mario Ronaldo, Mario Ronaldo, and Corey Graves, who work together in the cruise, and they're gonna have cruiserweights. Uh, you know, they're gonna have. Cruiserweight action, and it's all going to be filmed right after SmackDown, and it will replace Talking Smack, you know, the interesting show, one of the few interesting shows on Network 2, 11 p.m. Because Lord knows what the, the crowd needs after two hours of, of watching um, Excellent Entertainment is another hour, another hour, ladies and gentlemen, of wrestling, turning SmackDown into a three-hour show. Because that works so well for Monday Night Raw. And that won't tire the audience. <laughs> ha ha ha. Ah, that's just perfect. So here it is on Crazy Side Seats. Um, here's the, supposedly the announcement of it will be uh, feature superstars that are 205 pounds and under. Including New Cruiserweight Champion Brian Kendrick. Don't care. TJ Video Game Person. Uh, per Perkins. Witch Swan, Noam Dar, Ho Ho Lun, the most blandest person in the tournament, Cedric Alexander, who is way too good. Honestly, Cedric Alexander does not, it is becoming an albatross on his neck. Cedric Alexander should not be in the cruise. Well, he is good enough. I still believe he could be good enough to be a world champion. He was good enough to be a world champion in Ring of Honor. I say trade him to SmackDown. And have him take the belt off, Incontinental title off, like say Miz comes back and have him become the new Incontinental title and have him run for the belt for a while. And then have him build him up face, you know, AJ or whoever is champion, right? Because honestly, that dude right there, I believe, I believe Cedric Alexander can be a very good classic. I think he is great. I think he has that look. And he has that look to be a world champion. I still believe that. <coughs> Lince Dorado, Graham Man Menace League, Tozawa, Jack Gallagher, who I don't know what happened to him. Must still, is he still signed? I don't know. And Gerv Silva and Hari Silva. I think the Bollywood boys. I don't care. <coughs> and he says uh, Triple H is saying 205 Lives, a natural progressive to showcase uh, the death uh, of our roster. Uh, which, what roster death? Because let's be honest, there is little to no roster deaths in what? Your women, your middle, you know, the, the, the mid card? The mid card overall is a complete joke. There is no one actually fighting for champ. It's just, it's a lot of lower cards and there's nothing else. Tag division, on Monday Night Raw is New Day and everyone else sucks. Maybe Enzo and Cass, but seriously, they, they lost to the guys who. who I don't know why. I don't know why the WWE continues having to lose, lose, lose. I don't know. They don't need to be that. They're over. I, it's. Can I say this? Like, well, they don't need to. Like, this whole argument. Well, they don't need the titles. The crowd loves them. So, if the crowd loves them, they don't need the titles because they'll bring the titles down. I'm like, seriously? You bring the popular act, they'll become more mega popular with the belts. 
Because at this point, a new day has run out. There's nothing cool or interesting with the new day. I'm done with them. A lot of people are they just shout about same thing with revival. Like, well, well they, they, like they need to get over with the title. If you're not over for the belt, if you're not, if you need a championship to get over, then you're not really that interesting. <coughs> the revival are not interesting. Period. End of discussion. They're bland. They're, uh, they're, they're not going to draw you anything. Well, let's be real with you. The revival sucks. They're just two bland dudes who can't. They're just trying so hard to cosplay as Arn Anderson, and um, you know. You know, uh, you know, trying to cosplay that old R. Anderson uh, and uh, t- uh, Tully and everything. I'm trying, Tully and R. trying so hard to cosplay as them. And in the end, they look so out of focus, out of sync of this generation. They are the they are the cause, man. They are creative wrestlers. They have no past. They have they have just they are breadth of anything interesting. That's why I can't wait for them to go on the main roster. And they get completely crapped on like the Vaud Villains and everyone else besides, you know, some of the other in the NXT. Because people are like, they don't have fists, they don't flip. And they'll be so boring and no one will care. And they'll be like, man, I don't care. They're stupid. Man, they're stupid and dumb. And the ratings will continue to go low. And the hardcore fans will love it. And then you know, the show will continue to go smaller and smaller and smaller, and people and the Raw will keep, Raw t- Raw and SmackDown will continue to put more t- tarp on every type of taping and live show they have. <clears throat> and they, I'm just spe- uh, they have gonna have a tarp on every live show and pay per view they have. I don't think that's you know that's just my personal thing, but yeah. Anyway, you know, he says, um, yada, yada, yada. They're going to have a must-see program. 205 Live is going to be this, that, the other. Okay, it's programmed, but it's just, yeah. The Cruiserweights, at this point, it, they don't, they have the separate show, but they're still going to be part of Raw. And I'm like, I don't care. I should care, but I don't. And it's right here, and you know, it, they're, they're, they are not doing well, and they're doing to put on a show on network, which, by the way, not everyone's going to see. Again, how many, I got to look this up, how many subscribers? <clears throat> okay, um, right now is the, 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 Update right now, da, 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 February, um, third quarter, fourth quarter. They haven't hit over two million. Okay. <clears throat> the, the, the latest count was only PW Court, and it says that, um, is uh yeah it says that uh first quarter 2016 march is 1.469 million paid well only 1.5 1.469 and paid in trial subscribers 1.357 million paid subscribers one myself and 120 um 112,000 trial subscribers let's see the <clears throat> Here's the thing here for you. Supposedly, uh, the first quarter of the uh, international stuff is majority. The majority of people are domestic. One point, uh, the majority of them are domestic in first quarter of 2016 are 1.107 million subscribers domestic. And only 300,000 are international, 25%. And that's just, um, you know, paid and trial su- the subscribers. We don't know how many of them are trial subscribers. So, again, the post-WrestleMania thing, they got a boost. But they're doing just trials. I mean, 434,000 trials, but no one actually paying more. I don't know, you know, again, be, I've been looking to uh, subscribe to the WWE Network. I'm looking to see anything else. Nothing really big updated yet. It's around one point. The one point, 
they can't get over the like I said, they have around one point four or one point five million. And how many of the people one point five million? The numbers I wanna see uh um let's see, I gotta look at this. Yes, it's it was one of the watched it was one of the most watched. Yes, it was one of the most watched shows according to a lot of uh, rest, a lot of these websites, including Goliath, um, dot com, WWE Cruiserweight um, is been uh, the number two watch show uh, on the network, other than Stone Cold Podcast. I don't know the numbers. I need to find. I don't. I can't find the numbers yet. But yeah, it is again the hardcores. The hardcores are buying this, and what. Is their response, the WWE response is just, okay, you're the hard or what? But yet, why aren't more casuals buying the network? It's $10. It is $10 per month. Is it a cost issue? Is it a internet issue? Netflix doesn't seem to have this issue. Hulu doesn't have this issue. Uh, I guarantee Amazon Prime doesn't have this issue. Why is it that the WWE Network have has this issue. I don't know. Does anyone else know? Who? What are they going to do <coughs> about this? But the cruiserweight, the, the cruiserweight situation is an interesting one. And until the WWE uh, finds a better plan, I mean, this could be their help. Honestly, if this works, maybe they just put the, sh- the cruiserweights not on Raw anymore. And just put them on their own perfect, like, this is their show permanently. That's the only way to do it, because that right there, um, because they're not clicking on Monday Night Raw. Maybe they will click more on SmackDown, I don't know. But, yeah, maybe this whole experiment with the Cruiserweight division is only good on the network. Maybe that's the only way, because that's the sad part. The Cruiserweight Cruiserweight stuff that cannot fit on Raw on broadcast to read the way they show it. Maybe it's just best if they just separate it and make it like a own private universe thing and made it exclusive to the WWE network. That will be the end. Maybe have people build them up and say, hey, how about you have a, a show uh, that the Cruiserweights want to go on Raw and SmackDown? You know, uh, have them participate in the World Rumble, have a couple matches about that on there. That's the, I always think that's the only way to do that. But that's just my personal opinion. Anyway, we're going to take a small break, and then we're going to come back. We're going to be looking at the, I'll be talking about the brand new Wonder Woman trailer. Let's talk about it. We're going to, you know, to get into our thoughts and feelings on it, and I want to hear your thoughts and feelings about this around the comments section below. You're going to hear mine after this little small music break. We'll be right back right after this here on the Duke CT Loud. <laughs> Back, ladies and gentlemen, here on the Duke City Lounge. Thank you so much for joining me. And the Wonder Woman trailer just dropped today, and I gotta say, I'm impressed by it. There are a lot of good things in this trailer, and it opens up. You see Wonder Woman, uh, Dan Prince, looking at an old photograph. I maybe mean, it takes place after Batman v Superman, since it is something maybe before. She seems very lamentful about trying to save the world. And now, it's maybe this will get back to why. It's, it's because Steve Trevor. I think that's what's going to happen. I think Steve Trevor might be 
going DOA or maybe he betrays her. Something happens that makes her really lose hope in man's world. Yes, she still, I think that's why she was living in it is because I think she was trying to look for the uh, data and everything. So this is something I can't wait to see. Also, it's a different from the, the mythos of Wonder Woman having the trials that she had to go through to see if she's ready to be the ambassador, which is something hopefully they will get to. But I think it's because there was an invading army after Steve Trevor, Steve Trevor crash lands into the um, the uh, the Amazon, uh, where the Amazons are, and there was an army, so they had to defend themselves. And, and um, yeah, I think Chris Pine looks really good as Steve Trevor. I think he's going to be a really good Steve Trevor. I like I like him as Captain Kirk, so I think he does. I think he will have a really good presence in the film as a good uh, side character. And as one of Gal Gadot, Gal Gadot, Gal Gadot. I can't pronounce her name, but I think she's going to be a really good Wonder Woman. She shows she has film presence. She has that charisma. That <clears throat> that 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 um, you know that that fighting spirit that I think really encapsulates Wonder Woman. And I honestly, when I look at this trailer, you know, I'm getting like, it looks like a mod for Battle the the new video game, Battlefield 1. Like, if EA is smart, I know they're um, a partner with like Star Wars, but if they were smart, I uh, know EA is not that smart, but if they were smart, they would try to find a way to get a, when this movie drops, like a close drop, they have to have a Wonder Woman type DLC made or their plan to if this movie's big enough because it looks like it's going to be you know the war to end all wars which I stuttered and sm- I smile because this is based in World War One, and <laughs> wait 20 years later yeah yeah 20 years later oh come on World War Two, which you know is interesting because they're you look, there's a lot of interesting stories of World War One, seeing what's going on in, in um, the type of uh, warfare that was happening in World War One, and uh, the players. There wasn't really much of a good, bad side. Not as, like, say, as much as depicted as in World War Two. There was clearly villains there. There was, you know, the Axis, Italy, um, Germany, and Japan, and the Allies, Russia, the Soviet Union, uh, yeah, so Union, you had America, Britain, and then there's other allies as well. Um, <clears throat> uh, yeah, so the big war, I mean, that is, you know, because only stories I rarely hear about World War One, and I'm going to be this, is the Christmas tale about uh, about how they actually wanted to have peace. I think it was the, we looked it up, um, it's the World War I Christmas Truce. It was, it was World War One. It was from no man's land. British and German soldiers, um, they wanted to do a Christmas truce. And that was my only real knowledge about World War One and the stories. Um, <laughs> you know, I know, how, like, I think it was um, the Archduke, Franz Ferdinand. I think he was shot. Uh, you know, again, I should know more about the World War One history and I'm more knowledge about the World War Two, which surprised that uh, one woman didn't. Uh, the history started. I think it was World War Two, wasn't it? I got look. Okay. Um, no, she was World War Two. She was mainly in World War Two. Was yes, yeah, she was created during World War Two. Um, she was created by uh, World War Two, the, the Golden Age. Uh, she was fighting Nazis and such. Instead, in the movies, they're going back a, a couple twenty years, which is interesting. I mean, this is really, really interesting seeing her um, go to World War One. So, I this is going to be very, very interesting to see how this character grows into that you know that very interesting conflict uh, that was the great the war that would end all wars. <laughs> that sadly, that did not happen. The wars continue to go on and on and on and on and continue on to this very day. But that was a way to chip her. But back to the point, I really like this trailer. The music, I think, really fits. I'd say, see, the, the one thing DC has over Marvel in the movies is soundtracks. 
Um, the, I need to get the Suicide Squad soundtrack soon. I gotta get that thing in my iPod, which I have to get a new one, a uh, new one, because my old one's broken. Maybe I should get a crowdfunding, a Kickstarter for that. Give Duke CT a new iPod, you know, just, you know, screw it. Because, hey, if, if, uh, a potato sand one works, so why not this? But anyway, uh, yeah, um, I honestly think there are so, the soundtracks to me are really just, they, they, to me, they are to me the most epic thing about these movies. The soundtracks, the music, and the, the score. Wonder Woman score beats the crap out of everything I've seen from Marvel. I mean, other than Guardians of the Galaxy, can anyone know anything memorable about these tracks? Anything memorable about Captain America? Anything memorable for the Avengers? No, I don't. The, the, uh, the, the, I don't. I can't wait to see the Justice League main score. That main or test school thing. That's gonna be great too. I, I don't. I didn't shoot. I. I there's that. That's me. I'm always gonna be. You know, I love that artistical score. I mean, that's just me. Anyway, um, Wonder Woman. I I give a thumbs up. I can't wait to uh, June. Um, I cannot wait to um to 2017 in the summer, where it, it finally comes in June 9th. I can't wait to see. Um, <clears throat> I want to see what Patty Jenkins can do. Let's see what Patty Jenkins, uh, you know, I, I hope that she, you know, she can hit this, to knock this about, you know, knock this thing out of the park because, you know, women really need this. They, 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 everybody talking about it. They need a strong female superhero. Uh, Marvel ain't doing it. Okay, all women are now side pieces and everything else. This is DC's shot. They, they're at the plate. They're at the plate now. They're warming up. This is at their plate. This is what they can do. If they hit a home run here, the thing changes. So I, I got hope. Hey, you know, let's see if Patty Jenkins can do this. Let's see if Gal Gadot can do this. And I got faith. I got hope. Because, hey, I like Suicide Squad. I like Batman v Superman. I think, you know, even though people hate them, I think this is going to be something a lot of people are going to be really happy with. But that's just my opinion. Anyway, this is Duke CT here. And that's the end of the Duke CT Lounge. Thank you so much for listening. Peace, love. I'll see y'all when I see y'all later.